Yo, what up? It's your boy Shady C here. Now, I watched a video by Grace Gavin that was quite interesting, and I thought I would rebut or respond to it. As a Christian, as someone who has placed his faith in Christ, I wanted to kind of give my opinion. Now, she showed, in case you didn't watch it, a bunch of children's books saying, this is more plausible than the Bible. This is more believable. This has more evidence. <clears throat> And I was listening and kind of getting a chuckle out of it. It was amusing. She took one step too far, though. She said there was no evidence for the existence of Jesus Christ. And I even know atheists who will debate against her on that. Who will say, you know what? I don't believe in Jesus as the Son of God, as a whole, you know, as, a, as the Bible ex expresses. But will debate for the existence of him. First off, <clears throat> there's too much evidence to support his existence. Um, I often say you can tell more about a person by what their enemies say. And um, first, second, and third century historians, if you look at their writings, none of them ever debated his existence. Because it was closer to source material, therefore harder to prove that he didn't live. It's much easier to prove that 2,000 years later. It's a lot harder to prove it, you know, less than 100 years later. First, let me say that um, some Bible scholars date the first original writings. We don't have it, but some hypothesize that the first original writings about Jesus um, existed. Um, I believe they said it was the Gospel of Mark. I'm, I'm going off the top of my head now. I believe they said Mark was the earliest and that the earliest Gospel of Mark was most likely written um, 10 to 25 years after the life of Christ. <clears throat> and they hypothesize as well that um, myth, it takes 100 years for myth to circulate. So 10 to 25 years is not near enough time for myth to circulate in that aspect. Also, if you think about it, if... And I believe one day we will find the smoking gun. We will find the very first original original um, written document about Jesus. Now, you also got to remember that um, Jewish um, record keepers, Jewish, the, the people who would, um, who would pass down the stories through word of mouth, were so accurate, it was scary. I'll put it this way. Um, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, and it was a group, it was by a group called the Essenes, and we found Old Testament writings. Now, bear in mind that the Essenes, they, they say that the Essenes flourished and hid during the life of Christ, or somewhere in that period. So, if you want to say the Old Testament is, what they say, 7,000 years old, something like that. Jesus is 2,000, so it was 5,000 years after the writings of the Old Testament were written down pen to paper. And in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they found um, some manuscripts from the Old Testament. <clears throat> or as, you know, if you're Jewish, you might say the Torah. They found these writings, and they almost match identically with what we have today. That is amazing. The only thing that was different from what I've read was um, different words like thee and thou. You know, if you're translating it, it's going to come out different with certain translation errors or whatnot. But basically, 5,000 years later, it was almost identical to what we have now. <clears throat> Nothing of... No, it wasn't like it said, uh, oh, in the story of Adam and Eve, well, again, I don't know if it was Genesis, I can't remember offhand, but... Story of Adam and Eve, uh, Eve really wasn't the first one to be tempted. It was Adam. Nothing that would change theology. Nothing that would change the theological surrounding of what we believe for the Torah. <clears throat> that is big news. Because if you think about it, if within 5,000 years, nothing has changed, why do you think 2,000 years is going to be such a big change? But let's get to some of what history has to say. Like I said... You can tell how people feel about you and how what kind of person you were based on what your enemies say. Um, the Roman historian Tacitus wrote, Nero fastened the guilt on a class hated for their abominations called Christians. This is not nice about Jesus, by the way. 
by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of Pontius Pilate and a most mischievous superstition, thus checked for the moment, again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome. 64 AD, not too long after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You notice there, he doesn't say, oh, that Jesus never lived. That Jesus didn't exist. He wasn't real. <clears throat> you notice that? Listen to this again. I'm going to highlight a specific... A specific part. <clears throat> Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of Pontius Pilate. <clears throat> and the most mischievous superstition thus checked for the moment. Now, what they are what they are saying there, the superstition is the fact that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the Living God. That's what he's saying. He's not saying, oh, he never lived. He never existed because there was so much proof back then that he did live and exist that uh, he couldn't do that. <clears throat> what we can learn from this ancient and rather unsympathetic reference to Jesus in the early Christians, notice first the Tacitus reports Christians derived their name from a historical person called Christus from the Latin or Christ. He is said to have suffered the extreme penalty, obviously alluding to the Roman method of execution known as crucifixion. This is said to have occurred during the reign of Tiberius and by the sentence of Pontius Pilate. This confirms much of what the Gospels tell us about the death of Jesus. But what are we to take from, Tac from Tacitus' rather enigmatic statement that Christ's death briefly checked a mischievous superstition, which subsequently arose not only in Judea but also in Rome? One historian suggests that Tacitus is here bearing indirect testimony to the conviction of the early church that Christ who had been crucified, had risen from the grave. That's what he's talking right there. Like I said, they did, in the early, the early um, Roman um, historians would spend time debating the deity of Christ, not his existence. Today, we're arrogant. We can sit there and go, yeah, 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 that Jesus never lived. Because 2,000 years, it's a lot harder to physically prove. Back then, it was much easier to physically prove people were still alive who knew Jesus. So it's much easier to, to, to disprove now. <clears throat> but anyways, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, if you want to know more of my amazing, awesome opinions on other subjects, you can check me out on YouTube at The Shady C Network. That's S-H-A-D-Y, the letter C, the word network. Remember, yo, this Shady C, and I'm always right.